Hello, and welcome to the Thai Chest. Today we are talking Thai bars. One question I get all the time is, how old is this Thai clip? Or, help, I need a 1940s Thai bar. In this video, I hope to give you some hints that will help determine the approximate age of a vintage Thai clip. I'll be covering the decades from the 1930s to the 60s, which represents the bulk of men's vintage jewelry found today. Let's begin with the 1930s. At this time, the tie bars were the slide-on style, with no teeth. They were simply made to slide on the tie, just like a paperclip. Patterns were fairly conservative, but there are some more whimsical themes like horses and golf clubs. Another key characteristic is colored enamel centers, many in the Art Deco style. We also see many colored cabochons, mostly in reds and blues, to simulate the color of rubies and sapphires. Here is an example of a tie bar with an enamel center in the Art Deco style. These particular kinds of tie bars are fun because they offer a vivid splash of color in yet a simple design. These are really popular in our store and don't last long on our shelves. Here is an example of a tie bar with a colored cabochon. These also offer a pop of color amidst a simple overall design. Depending on the maker, the cabochon could be made of colored plastic or glass. Here's the tie bar by Swank with a reverse painted horse, a popular theme found on jewelry throughout the 1930s and 40s. Speaking of which, let's dive into the 1940s. Tie bars are still made with the slide-on mechanism. Initials on jewelry becomes increasingly popular. You'll see many of the major jewelry companies like Swank, Hickok, and Anson come up with their own unique initial designs, which they will transfer over to other pieces of jewelry as well, and also including um, on belt buckles, key fobs, cigar boxes, and much more. The illusion of the pierced look tie bar comes out in 1947. Even today, these are probably the most sought after vintage tie bars. Why? Because they're just so cool. Wait till you see them. Lastly, we start to see the emergence of a wider variety of novelty themes, mostly occupational related, like barber scissors, saws, and garden spades. Here are a few examples of initial tie bars. You can find some with single letters, two letters, and even sometimes three letters. I suggest if you find a vintage tie bar with your three initials, grab it because who knows when you'll find one again. Here's that famous pierced look. It's a tie bar that slides onto both sides of the tie, giving the illusion that it's piercing through the tie. The swords are by far, by far the most popular designs, but there are also other themes as well, like arrows, tools, initials, and much more. Here are a few examples of occupational themes that we see emerging in the 1940s. A pair of barber scissors and a saw. The two-tone metal here gives them a nice touch. Now let's get to the meat, the 1950s. This is by far the most popular decade for men's jewelry. An important development was the crocodile grip mechanism made by Hickok. Other companies quickly followed with their own designs of the standard tie clasp as we know it today. Initials are still popular, but now we start to see even personal names on jewelry. Finally, the most remarkable characteristic of 1950s jewelry is the explosion of themes found on jewelry. Almost anything goes, from tribal masks to transportation to chess pieces and music notes. The themes are virtually endless and so exciting to discover. Here is a view of Hickok's exclusive crocodile grip. This revolutionized the tie clip mechanisms. The slide type tie bars were still being made, but the advantage with this style was that it was advertised as being able to hold the tie more securely. Here are a few of the names you can find on vintage tie clips. Again, if you find your name, I suggest you get it, as there aren't many of each style still around. Here are some novelty themes, a door knocker that actually knocks, and a matching set with a fishing rod tie clip and fish-shaped cufflinks. Let's finish with the 1960s. As you may remember, the late 50s and early 60s saw the emergence of the skinny tie. Following suit, you will find tiny tie clips to match proportionally. We see lots more uses of stones, especially more colorful and interesting polished stones. Finally, handmade jewelry is becoming increasingly popular. Jewelry making kits are sold and people are encouraged to try their hand at making their own jewelry. Here are some tie clips that are suited for skinny ties. These tie clips generally measure three quarters of an inch to one inch wide. 
Here's an example of a homemade tie clip. It appears to be a laminated piece of newspaper glued onto a tie clip. A great piece of space memorabilia. The 1960s were a lot about stones. Here you can see an example of a beautifully polished stone that has been glued on a tie clip. And this one is a Rivoli stone, another type of stone you will find a lot on tie clips and cufflinks in a variety of color combinations. From the 1970s onward, men's jewelry was not as popular as it was during the mid-century decades of the 20th century. Jewelry from the 1930s to the 60s truly represents a unique moment in time where men's jewelry was all the rage. Of course, men's jewelry is still being produced today, <clears throat> but it does not come close to comparing with the styles and workmanship that can be found on true vintage pieces. As time goes on, these pieces will naturally become more scarce and hold an, a unique historical value, which is why they are so much fun to collect, wear, and appreciate. If you're looking for great vintage tie bars, please visit us at thetiechest.com for a great selection to choose from. We ship all our tie clips securely in a padded foam packet, and you get a free gift bag for a classy presentation. We also offer free shipping worldwide. You can find us both on eBay and Etsy. Visit our website for the direct link to both stores. We also invite you to connect with us. Find us on your favorite social media site and come say hi. We'd love to meet you. If this video was useful to you, we'd appreciate a thumbs up below. Thanks for watching.